everyone, my name is Cole. I wanna do a video on basic training, what you can expect. If you are planning on going to basic training anytime soon, if you clicked on this video, you probably are, or you're wanting to join the army, thinking about going, and as part of that requirement will be to complete basic training. I just came back from basic training uh, this week. I got back four or five days ago, something like that. So I can tell you exactly what to expect from basic training at Fort Jackson. So let's get into it. Personally, I came in on an airplane. So I showed up to the Columbia airport and I walked about 100 meters before I found the drill sergeant. Uh, the, real, the drill sergeant already had um, a ton of people in formation. There were probably 40 or 50, eh, 30 to 40 people there in formation. They were just standing there with all their stuff. Uh, we stood there for about an hour. From the airport, you get on a charter bus. It's a pretty nice bus with pretty nice seats and you go to reception. The reception area is about 15 minutes away from the airport. Once you get to reception, you basically get yelled at for a little while, you do some more push-ups, and you do a bunch of paperwork. So you get off the bus, females will go to the left, males will go to the right. Uh, you get in your lines, you look down at the ground, there's yellow feet, so you know exactly where to stand. Uh, you'll get in your lines, you'll do push-ups for maybe five or 10 minutes, it's not bad. Then you file inside, single file line inside, the ladies go first, and then uh, the males will follow after that. At this point, it's pretty late and you have to be up about 3.30 to 4 a.m. the next morning. So you won't have a whole lot of time to sleep. I think I got like two hours of sleep. It's gonna be a really long day that first day. So you'll spend a total of about three days at reception. The reception area is nice because you do get pretty good food, one, and two, you get your phones. So when you're up in the Bay Area sleeping, uh, you will have access to your phones. The other things you do at reception are your shots. After your shots, you will get your uniform issued to you, your boots, your OCPs, your PC, all, you get all your stuff issued to you, and you'll also get your ID card picture taken. You'll get this picture taken, it has your rank, it has all your stuff on it, it has your name. You won't get to keep the card at this time, but the card will follow you wherever you go, so your drill sergeants will keep track of the card for you. At reception, you also get your first haircut, as you um, are expecting. I think it happens on day two. And finally, uh, you will start your fire guard shifts. So what fire guard is, is two people will be awake at all times. They'll basically be walking back and forth or standing by the door, and the drill sergeant can come in at any time and ask you, like, what's your second general order, or uh, what's a soldier's creed? You just answer the question, and generally they go away without a problem. The issue is when somebody's not at the door, when they're asleep at the door, um, that's when the drill sergeant will wake up the entire bay, basically embarrass you and make sure you don't do that again. So after your third day at reception, you'll get on a bus and you'll go another 15 minutes away from there to your actual company. This is where you lose all your stuff. As soon as you get there, they're gonna march you in, they'll yell at you quite a bit, they're gonna give you an MRE, and you're gonna have no idea what you're doing with this MRE. Unless you've looked up on YouTube how to eat an MRE, you don't know how to use the heater that they provide you. So when they give you the MRE, you really don't know what you're doing. MREs are not that difficult, however, the first time you get one, you're not gonna have time to read the directions or to figure it out. It's hilarious watching people try to figure out these MREs. You won't get a whole lot of food in on this meal. Uh, just accept that for what it is because you will eat dinner that night at the defect. You're going to do a quick layout of all your stuff and this is where you put your personal bags in the lockers and you don't see them again for a while. Your phones also go in your personal bag. At this time, you're starting your 72 hours of suck is what we called it. You don't know it at the time, but you have the first three days to really break yourself into basic training and that's when the drill sergeants are the hardest on you. Uh, one, you're in red phase and two, you're in the first three days, the first 72 hours. So if you can just get through these first three days, you're gonna be all right. But some things you can expect are real short times to eat. You'll have like five minutes or less to eat your food. Uh, you'll have all this food on your plate and then you'll, they'll just be yelling at you, eat, chew, eat, chew. They'll be in your face screaming right behind you as you're eating. The shower drills are somewhat comical as well because you get like two or three minutes to get undressed, shower, and then get redressed and they're yelling at you the whole time. They're in total control of the shower. If you're the first group to go in, the shower's ice cold because the water hasn't warmed up yet. Your shower drills are just, they're gonna suck. After these three days are over, you're basically in week two. You'll start week two on Sunday, but you don't have to worry about the shower drills one, and then two, they won't yell at you as much at the defect. They are still gonna yell at you, 
um, as you're eating, but it won't be nearly as bad. You'll notice a difference from the first three days to the second week here at basic. During the second week, you're of course gonna have your PT every morning. Our wake up was 05, which wake up means be total line, be at the end of your bed and full uniform ready to go at five. Uh, that's what wake, the wake up time is not the time you actually need to wake up. So if they say wake up's at 5.30, you need to be up by five uh, shaving and doing all the other stuff so you can be ready to go in uniform at 5.30 when they walk in the door. You're gonna go over basic trainings, your harassment training, your army core values training, those types of things. A lot of trainings in the army are pretty dry, but you need to stay awake, pay attention, just get through them, they're not hard. During week two, you can also start sending mail. You won't be receiving any mail, but you, will, you can start sending mail and then people will start responding to you by about week three, probably as early, maybe the end of week two, but probably about week three, uh, you'll start getting mail coming in. Also during this week, you're going to have your first PT test. So you're gonna go out and do the, the new fitness test more than likely, that's the one I did. And another thing you're gonna do this week is your CIF equipment issue. So you'll go to CIF and get all your stuff issued. You already have your uniforms, but you'll get your rucksack, your sleeping bag, You'll get a bunch of your, your shovel, a bunch of the items you'll need to go on your rucks and your overnight marches. So speaking of overnight marches, you'll have three big events during basic training. The first one is the hammer. The second one is the anvil. And the third training event is the forge. The forge is also the very last training event you do. The forge is important because it's the very last training requirement. It's the last checkbox you have to check before you complete all the graduation requirements. You'll hear people talk about the forge all the time and that's uh, the final training event that you do a basic training. So in week three, you prepare for the hammer. You haven't gone on a ruck yet, so you don't really know what to expect. It's really easy. You ruck out maybe four or five miles, not very far. You put your sleeping bag out. You'll sleep on the sleeping bag. The next day you'll do some trainings. You'll learn how to use like a radio and then you march back. The biggest thing is don't fall out of the ruck march. If you can stay in the ruck march, you'll be just fine. Before you leave for the hammer, we gotta choose our battle buddy. So you get to choose the person who you sleep right next to. Uh, you'll be in teams of two. So you'll get to choose who that battle buddy is and make sure it's somebody you trust and get along with because you'll spend a lot of time with that person. You do victory tower as well. And that's where you rappel off the big tall tower. It's pretty easy. There's a few different stations there. Uh, you'll do a practice rappel. Then you'll go up and do the actual rappel. Then you'll climb down a rope, up a rope, down a rope. Then you'll go to the very top of the tower and you'll climb down a rope net. And that's it. Once you do all that, you're done with Victory Tower. So again, the hammer, it's gonna end off week three. It's gonna finish up your red phase. As soon as you get back, you'll get a phone call. We got a phone call when we got back and then you'll get to uh, officially be in white phase after the hammer, after red phase comes white phase. Now white phase is pretty good compared to red phase. It's way more relaxed. You have more time to eat at the defect. You have plenty of time to shower, no more shower drills or anything like that. Another thing is you get to sing cadences while you march, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is kind of cool because you'll see other groups walking around singing while they're marching. You're like, why can't we do that? Once you get to white phase, you get to do that for the rest of the time you're in basic training. You'll do a lot of weapons training, classroom weapons training. You're issued your M4s uh, during this week. So that's the weapon that you'll learn how to take apart, put back together. You'll do that hundreds of times, take it apart, put it back together over and over and over. You'll clean it a ton of times. They'll take Q-tips and stick the Q-tips in there and have a little speck of carbon on there and say your weapon's not clean. So make sure when you clean your weapon, you do a good job because they will uh, make you clean it over and over and over. During this week, we also got to choose how we're going to get home or to AIT. Depending on where you're going, you might be able to have a choice if your parents can drive you or if you have to take government transportation. Week five, we had a lot of classroom training on weapons. We had fit to win. So fit to win is a whole team obstacle course where there's like 10 obstacles and everybody on your team has to do, has to finish one obstacle before you can begin the next obstacle. So say it's like low crawling, everybody has to finish the low crawl and then the first person can start the next one if it's monkey bars or whatever it is. Uh, and then you'll race against another team, uh, another co or another platoon. On the other side of the street, we had another team building obstacle course type thing. You pick people from your team to complete this scenario. So there'll be like a wood block in the middle and then they'll give you a rope, uh, a two by four, and then a, an ammo box. And you have to get the ammo box and 
uh, people from your team from one side of the pit to the other. Now a lot of white phase is going to be shooting. A lot of the time is spent at the range. You'll be shooting your M4s. First, you'll group in zero with your iron sights. So you'll go, you'll make sure uh, your iron sight is wherever you point is where the, the round is going to end up. So make sure that's a nice tight grouping. After that, you'll go and qualify. Uh, you have to get 23 out of 40. It's not very hard to qualify. After the iron sights, you'll do the exact same thing uh, a few days later with the red dot sight. CCO is what they call it. You'll go and group and zero the red dot, qualify at the red dot as well. At the end of week five, we also went back and we got more shots. Some of us that got shots at the beginning, um, the certain type of shot, we had to get it twice. So we got the beginning and halfway through basic. So we went back and did that. And then we turned in any items that like didn't fit and then replaced those for new items. So if you had boots that were defective or whatever, you would at this time get a chance to replace those for new boots. So the beginning of week six, uh, we finished up our qualifications at the range. If you, if you already qualified, you literally sat there and did nothing. You sat in the bleachers and read study material. Well, if you were unable to qualify, uh, you just went over and over that day and shot and shot and shot until you did qualify. The rest of this week, we prepared for the anvil because at the end of week six, you will step off for the anvil. So we practiced in the classroom land navigation, nine line medical evacs, basically things we, we thought we needed for the anvil. When it comes down to it, the anvil is just like the hammer, but you stay out in the field an extra day. So the hammer, you sleep one night in the field. The anvil, you'll sleep two nights in the field. The march out there, I believe, is ours was around six miles. So it's a little bit more intense than the first one. Still not bad. And the anvil was kind of cool because we didn't even have to march back. We got up in the morning. We walked about a mile to a bus location, and the buses picked us up and drove us back. So that was kind of cool. I'm not sure if that's how yours is, but that's how mine looks. When you get back to your company, they'll do the little ceremony, transitioning you from white phase to blue phase, and then you'll get your phone calls. Now week seven, things kind of start to feel real because you don't get fitted for your dress blues. And when you put your dress blues on, you can just feel the graduation. Like you're almost there, you're in blue phase, uh, you're about to graduate. You at least get it fitted. You don't get to take it back with you yet, but you get it fitted so then they can come drop it off next week. And after they dry clean it, uh, it looks really nice. In week seven, we also did some classroom training on grenades because coming up soon, you guys will end up throwing two live grenades. And then we also did a practice land nav course. So that one was really cool. We got to pick our teams for that as well. There are four or five of us. We plotted our points just around our company. And then we took a big, um, a big chunk of time, probably three or four hours. Uh, the whole afternoon and went and did this land navigation practice course. To end week seven, we did a practice PT test. The scores didn't count, but it just shows how you improved from week two to now. Uh, they, they just want to see improvement. They don't really care what you score as long as you're getting better. It doesn't matter if you pass again. Uh, the pass doesn't really matter until the last PT test. So the next week, week eight, is where you throw your grenades. You throw your two grenades and that's pretty much it. You'll take your final PT test. It's good to get that over with. And then you'll do random classroom trainings all in preparation for the forge. Uh, because at the end of this week, you do stuff for the forge and basically uh, finish basic training. So you don't really know exactly what to expect with the forge and yours could be different, but ours was a lot like the hammer and the anvil. We walk out there, we march out there with our rucks on. Uh, the rucks don't weigh as much. You don't have to take as much equipment. However, you do have to walk at least 10 miles. Ours was, I think, 10 and a half or 11 miles. You're gonna get blisters. Your feet are gonna hurt. Just tape up before you go. You can handle it, you can do it. So a lot happens during the forge. You'll march, you're 10 miles out there. You leave at 10 o'clock at night. So when you get out there, it's about one or two in the morning, something like that. Then you'll set up your, you'll try to go to sleep but every 10 or 15 minutes or so, they'll throw fireworks or whatever. Whenever they throw the fireworks, you have to make sure your weapon's pointed outward, you're pulling security, uh, you're in a hot zone so you can't be sleeping. They'll do that for a while, about three or 4 a.m. Uh, they stop doing that and you can go to sleep and they wake you up at about 7 a.m. They make you pack up all your stuff and then you march back towards the company uh, like a mile or two 
once you get there, after you've eaten breakfast and lunch and whatnot, you get a chance to go back to sleep during the afternoon uh, to catch up on some of that sleep. And then you'll just do random trainings throughout the evening. But this will be the second night you sleep out there. Um, they won't mess with you as much. You get a good night of uh, sleep out there in the field. Third day, the activity where you crawl underneath the live rounds. So you'll do that. And then as soon as you're done with that, you'll have to do a resupply mission. Basically your platoon has to carry these heavy boxes, ammunition, just big, heavy, empty boxes. They're real bulky. Um, and these boxes have enough room. They have enough handles for six people on one of them, four people on another one, two people on another one. I think there's a total of four boxes. So you constantly have to switch out people because people are getting tired. You have to carry these boxes for about three or four miles. The good news is you're headed back towards the company. The bad news is it's they're heavy as hell. Everybody's feet hurt, everybody has blisters, so it's kind of a pain in the butt, but it is um, one of the, the missions to do and you have to do it. Then you finally end up in your sleeping area for that night, sleep there that night, get a good night's sleep there. Uh, and the next day, uh, you slowly, you do trainings as well throughout the day, like you do a mass, a mass casualty training where the drill sergeants start throwing fireworks everywhere and they say, boom, you're dead, boom, you're dead. Um, they'll have like 20 people die and then you have to move these dead bodies from one side of the field to the other while um, some people are pulling security and some people are putting on tourniquets things like that it's kind of a cool little event uh, it was a lot of fun once we got done with that um, we slowly started marching back towards the company we got back to the company we ate dinner at the company dropped all of our, sh our stuff off at the company then went back on a march to Victory Field is what we called it. I think it's actually called Hilton Field. We got to Hilton Field about 1 a.m. We were super confused on what we were doing. We thought we were done with the forge. And then they put us in a really big circle. And they said, uh, they said, lay down and go to sleep. <laughs> it was cold outside. We didn't have any blankets. We didn't have our sleeping bags. All we had were our weapons and our uniforms. That was it. When we woke up from that, we got on a bus and we went to Victory Breakfast. That's when we realized we were done with the forge. Is our drill sergeants, our platoon leaders, so our lieutenant, and then even our captain came in and they were feeding us breakfast. We got a good 25 minutes to eat. That ends in week eight and you'll be there a total of 10 weeks. So there's still about two weeks left of training of what you have of basic. But in those last two weeks, really all you do is you get up, you do PT in the morning, you'll do bay maintenance. So you'll go and you'll clean your bays, uh, you'll make them spotless, you'll clean out your lockers, you'll turn in all your stuff to CAF. So all that stuff that you use, your tarps, your shovels, you gotta clean all that stuff and then go turn it into CIF. Once you get a go from CIF, you're good. You're, you're done. All you're waiting for is to leave to go to AIG. And then you'll have family day the day before graduation where your family can come out. Uh, you'll hang around on base with your family. Uh, I didn't get family day. It was canceled because of the coronavirus. Um, but we still got to walk around base. We got to go to the troop store. We got to get real food. For that evening, we were allowed to call our parents and we had about 40 minutes on the phone instead of just the 15 like normal. And then the next day was graduation. Again, we didn't have a graduation because of the coronavirus. So we still walked through and did the motions of graduation. However, there were no people there to watch us. So they Facebook live streamed it. The next day uh, we were scheduled to leave and I gotta go home. So basic training is a lot. There's a lot to do. There is a lot that happens, but you get in a routine. You just do it one meal at a time and you get through it. It sucks really bad at first. Uh, it gets a little bit better as you progress throughout. Just remember nothing that the drill sergeants do is personal. They, it's their job to, to do what they do. So sometimes you'll hate them. They're just doing a job just like you would do if you were in their situation. They're gonna do because they're in that situation and they're in that position. And again, remember every single basic training experience is going to be a little bit different. You guys might get 30 minute phone calls or I got 15 minute phone calls or you guys might march seven miles when I march six. Everything's gonna vary a little bit, but that's just the basic itinerary of what you can expect at Fort Jackson. Again, I just graduated basic training in March of 2020, about five days ago. So if you're watching this anytime in 2020, you can expect probably what I expected. Anyway, if you have any questions about BASIC, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'll definitely answer anything I see down there. And good luck to you guys.